Hi and welcome to another Educate Fitness tutorial. This video is part of a series of shorts looking at level 2 anatomy and physiology. In this video we're going to be covering bones and structure of a long bone. Before we get started, what is a bone? Now bones are calcified connective tissue with their own blood supply. They're hard in texture and they contain the important minerals that are required by the body. There are 206 bones in the human skeleton and they can be classified depending on their shape or their form. Today we're going to go through the different types. We've got long bones, irregular bones, sesamoid bones, short bones and flat bones. Let's go through each one individually, starting with long bones. So a good example of the long bone is the femur. Uh, we've got the humerus, the ulna, the radius. All right, these are hard and dense bones. They are longer than they are wider. And the basic function for these is to provide structure and mobility. Therefore, they're for movement. It's an important point. Long bones are for movement. And as it says here in brackets, they act as levers for gross movement. So what does that mean? Well, if you can think of your arm, all right, you've got your bones here and we need to create movement. I want to move this pen, this pen up towards my nose, almost in a bicep curl uh, motion. So we've got the two bones here, sorry, the three bones here actually, all right, the upper arm and the lower, the lower arm bones. And this is our lever, all right? And the muscle connected to these bones is gonna act as that lever, all right? And the lever, we can bring it up, we can take it back down, all right? And that's what long bones do. They create movement, they act as levers for gross movement. So that's the main point here that you need to take home. Long bones, they act as levers for gross movement. Next, we've got short bones. Now, short bones can be found, or a good example of short bones is the carpals in our hands, all right? When it comes to the carpals, they're roughly cu cuboid in shape, and they're almost equal in length than width. Obviously, we've said in terms of long bones, they're larger, sorry, longer rather than wider. But when it comes to these uh, short bones, they're almost cuboid, so they're almost the same length and width. They allow movement, and they're also there to create strength, all right? The difference here, and the main thing to point out here, something to remember, is they create fine movement. Next, we've got flat bones. Now, a good example of the flat bone is the scapula, all right? Flat bones, they're thin and they tend to be sandwiched between, sorry, they're thin and they, they are sandwiched between two compact layers, all right? And what are compact, what are uh, flat bones required for? What do they allow? Well, they allow muscle attachment. That's their main purpose. They're providing a surface for muscle to attach to. Main thing to remember here, muscle attachment, they do also allow fine movement. Next, we've got the irregular bones, all right? And the main example that everybody comes to here is the vertebra, all right? That's the, the bones of the spine. Now, the irregular bones, they do have complicated shapes. Just think of your, your vertebra, all right? The, 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 the combined bones that are in there, and they are irregular, all right? So they are complicated in shape. And the shape is, is, is all about the function that they are, they're about to perform. And what is the function that they perform? It's all about protection, all right? So within that vertebra, we've got the spinal cord, and that's what these irregular bones within the vertebra uh, are doing. They're creating protection of the spinal cord, and obviously they allow the different types of spine movement. The final, the final bone that we have, the final classification, should I say, is the sesamoid bone, all right? An example would be the, uh, the small patella bone in your knee. And what is the purpose of this? Well, the sesamoid bones, they improve leverage. They protect joints. And ultimately, they protect the tendons and the ligaments. Okay, so just to run through quickly, there are five classifications of bones. We got the long bones, all right? Act as levers for gross movement, tick. We got the short bones, they create fine movement. Perfect. Flat bones, what do the flat bones do? They provide a long surface, uh, sorry, a large surface for muscle attachment. There you go. 
Irregular bones. When we think of irregular bones, all we need to think about really is the vertebra. And that will help us remember or understand what these irregular bones are for. They're complicated in shape. The main function is protection. Protection of that spinal cord and also movement. And finally, last but not least, is the sesamoid bone. All right. This is all about leverage and it protects joints, it protects ligaments and it protects tendons. Now, before we finish, I just want to go through this section here. Now, this is the structure of a long bone, and it is something that you are going to need to be aware of and understand for your level two anatomy and physiology exam. Remember, this is a long bone. All right. So now we're talking about this here. So let's quickly go through this. Now, the long bone is mainly split into three parts, all right? I'm gonna make this clearer. For level two, we're gonna forget this section here, but we have the epiphyses, which are the ends of the bone, and then we have the shaft, which is the diaphysis. Let's run through this structure in a little bit more detail. Obviously, there's a lot to look at here, so let's give a little bit more detail onto which part is which and what each part does. So. So the epiphysis that we can see at either side here, this is the expanded portion at each end of the bone. And as you can see here, it consists of the cancellous or spongy bone tissue that gives it the ability to endure compression. So this section here, we, it's saying the epiphyseal line, but we can also call this the epiphyseal plate. Now the epiphyseal plate, it's a high line cartilage plate at each end of the long bone and it's found in bodies that are still growing. So you could be talking up to the age of 18 to 21. All right, so this section here, as the, younger, as the young child or the older child grows, obviously the bone needs to grow with it. And this is where new bone growth happens, all right? The bone will increase in length here. Now, a thing to, to, to remember, and it is very important uh, when you're dealing with, uh, with children, when you're training children of any age, this can be quite a weak part of the bone. All right. It's 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 why we have to be very careful uh, not to use too much weight bearing exercises with children because it can be weak and can be prone to breaking, to damage. And it can be very painful for obviously for the children and for the for the child trainer. Therefore, it is something that you need to be aware of. Now, when um, when we mature and there's no more growth to be done in our bodies, this epiphyseal plate, it hardens and becomes what's called the epiphyseal line, as you can see here. Next, we've got articular cartilage. Now, articular cartilage is the connective tissue that covers the end of the bones. The main purpose for this cartilage is all about protection. Now, next, we've got the periosteum. Now, if you think of the periosteum, 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 if you can say it properly, it's a tough fibrous sheath that covers the diaphysis of the bone. It doesn't cover the epiphysis or the epiphyses, it covers the, uh, the diaphysis of the bone. What does it contain? Well, it contains the blood supply that brings nutrients for the bones and removes waste. Next up, we got the compact bone. Now, compact bone is solid and strong to help the long bone withstand weight bearing stress. Up here on the diagram, you can see spongy bone, also known as cancellous bone. Now, cancellous bone is spongy bone tissue that contains red marrow. Now, where are we? So flat, short and irregular bones are mainly comprised up of, uh, of cancellous or spongy bone. The medullary cavity is this hollow tube down the centre of the compact bone. And finally, just a quick note on red marrow and yellow marrow. Yellow marrow facilitates storage of fat and the red bone marrow's primary role is the production of blood cells. Red marrow functions in the production of various types of blood cell and is found in cancellous bone tissues. So my advice is to go through and understand this diagram of a long bone. As I said, it is important uh, it is an important part of the uh, the level two anatomy and physiology uh, exam. 
you'll need to understand these five different types of bone. You know, what are they? What's their purpose? And there you have it. It really is that simple. If you have any questions or comments, please do add them to the, uh, the comments below. Please do subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification to be made aware of any new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.